This video is intended to be used in conjunction with the written instructions that came with your product, SNC Instruction Sheet number 682505. You can download this instruction sheet at snc.com. Vista Remote Supervisory Underground Distribution Switchgear operates at high voltage. Failure to observe the precautions below will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from your company's operating procedures and rules. Where discrepancy exists, follow your company's operating procedures and rules. Examine the shipment for external evidence of damage as soon after receipt as possible, preferably before removal from the carrier's conveyance. Check the bill of lading to make sure all listed shipping skids, crates, cartons, and containers are present. Pad-mounted style switchgear consists of the tank and the outer enclosure, which has the low voltage compartment attached to it. Both are fastened to a wooden skid, with the tank shipped within the outer enclosure. Motor operators are individually packed and shipped in boxes. Optional current sensors are packaged three per box and are shipped separate from the gear. All current sensor, voltage sensor, and motor operator wiring is routed to the low voltage compartment through a junction box mounted on the tank. These wires and cables are neatly coiled and set on the tank for user installation. If three-phase voltage sensing is specified, there will be up to three pairs of ground wires, VSG1 and VSG2, that are included in the main enclosure. To help protect the finish from damage, remove all packing materials from the outside of the enclosure at the first opportunity. To remove the enclosure, first, loosen the pentahead bolts securing the hinged roofs to the enclosure using a pentahead socket wrench with an extender or a pentahead tool. Then, lift the hinged roofs upward and secure them with the holders. If you remove the front panels, make sure to keep track of which side of the enclosure is the operation side and the termination side. Now, unbolt the enclosure from the skid. Do not lift the pad-mounted enclosure while it is still bolted to the skid with the tank. The lifting tabs on the pad-mounted enclosure will not support the combined weight of the pad-mounted enclosure and the tank. Failure to follow these precautions can result in serious personal injury or equipment damage. When lifting, use 6-foot, 183-centimeter, or longer hoist slings of equal length to prevent damaging the pad-mounted style enclosure or tank during lifting. Close the hinged roofs and be sure the low voltage compartment door is secure. Use a three-point lifting scheme to properly balance the enclosure. Arrange the hoist slings so the lifting forces are equally distributed between the lifting tabs. Avoid sudden starts and stops. Set the enclosure aside in a protected area. To place the tank, first unbolt it from the skid. Then use a four-point lifting scheme to properly balance the gear. Using the same precautions as the enclosure, lift the tank above the mounting pad. Verify the tank is positioned correctly with respect to the cables and anchor bolts and lower the tank into place. Then, secure the tank to the pad using the anchor brackets provided. Danger! Before energizing the switchgear, replace the shipping covers on all bushings and bushing wells with elbows or insulated protective covers or caps. Failure to replace the shipping covers on all bushings with elbows or insulated protective caps can result in a flashover and serious personal injury or death. To terminate the cables, Remove the shipping covers from the bushings and bushing wells. Then, terminate the cables with elbows following the elbow manufacturer's instructions. Caution! Always follow proper cable installation practices. 
When installing cable that will be attached to the switchgear, provide a strain relief segment to minimize the load on the bushings. Cables must be allowed to expand and flex without putting a significant load on the bushings. For a pit, either loop the cable into the pit or bring it into the pit horizontally and up to the gear at a 90 degree angle. Failure to follow these precautions can result in damage to the bushings and bushing wells and subsequent leakage of insulating gas. With the cable installed, the enclosure can be placed on the pad. When installing the pad mounted enclosure over the tank, place the side of the enclosure with the termination compartment label over the terminators and the side of the enclosure with the operation compartment label over the operating mechanisms. This will ensure the compartments are properly identified and the panels are in their correct locations. The panel on the operation compartment side is larger. Using the same three-point lifting scheme and precautions as discussed earlier, lift the enclosure into place over the tank. Refer to the catalog dimensional drawing furnished and verify the enclosure compartments are positioned correctly and the enclosure is properly aligned with respect to the anchor bolts. Then, secure the enclosure to the pad using the anchor brackets provided. To ground the switchgear, connect the cable concentric neutral ground wires to the grounding system as appropriate. Notice, to ensure proper operation of the components inside the low voltage enclosure, connect the tank ground pad and the enclosure ground pad provided near the low voltage enclosure to the system ground facility. Connect the ground pad of the tank and the ground pad inside the enclosure to the system ground facility in accordance with the user's standard grounding practice. Connect with the shortest possible connection. Use the equivalent of 4 aught copper or cable sized in accordance with the user's standard practice in either a single or multiple connection to realize the maximum momentary rating of the switchgear. For a multiple connection, cables smaller than 1 aught copper or equivalent should not be used. To attach the sensors to the switchgear, remove the current sensors, hardware, and wiring harness from the box marked SNC Current Sensors. Then, connect the current sensors to the wiring harness as shown on the interconnection wiring diagram provided with the gear. Next, place each current sensor in front of the phase of the way on which it will be installed. Note, each SNC Current Sensor has a unique magnitude ratio and phase angle shift. These values are used to calibrate the current sensing inputs to the user-supplied remote terminal unit, RTU. The magnitude ratio and phase angle shift of each current sensor must be recorded on the yellow card provided in accordance with the way and phase on which the current sensor will be installed. The magnitude ratio and phase angle shift of each current sensor are written on a tag attached to the sensor and on the sensor itself. Remove the quarter-inch 20-gap nut on one of the current sensors. Open the sensor and place it around the appropriate high-voltage cable. There is an H polarity mark embossed on the current sensor. All three current sensors for each way must be installed with the polarity marks facing in the same direction. Consult your wiring diagram. Then, replace and tighten the gap nut. Secure the current sensors to the high-voltage cable below the cable terminator using the plastic tie wraps furnished. If the cable has a grounded concentric neutral, the current sensor must be secured in one of the following ways. A. It may be placed around the concentric neutral, in which case the concentric neutral must be brought back through the current sensor. B. It may be placed above the concentric neutral, in which case the terminator drain wire must be brought through the sensor. Install the set's two other current sensors. Then cross-check the magnitude ratio and phase angle shift of each current sensor with the information recorded on the yellow card. Once complete, remove and discard the attached tags. Fault indicators are to be furnished by the user and installed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Optional mounting provisions for fault indicators are available. If mounting provisions are specified, mount the fault indicators on the mounting brackets. Use the following steps to route the low voltage compartment wiring. Notice, 
Failure to follow wiring and grounding instructions will result in electronic damage and may cause nuisance operation. Uncoil the junction box main cables that will be routed to the low voltage compartment. These cables have low voltage connectors on their ends. Insert the three inch PVC pipe through the access port. Make sure equal lengths of pipe are showing in the low voltage compartment and in the pad mounted enclosure. The G1 ground wire is labeled and located in the low voltage compartment. Carefully insert the G1 wire from the low voltage compartment through the PVC pipe into the main enclosure. Connect the ground wire G1 to the copper ground angle located on the tank. If three-phase voltage sensing is specified, there will be up to three pairs of ground wires, VSG1 and VSG2, that are included in the main enclosure. VSG1 and VSG2 wires are marked with a hanging notice tag. Disconnect the ground wires from the temporary grounding leads and route them into the low voltage enclosure. The temporary green wires can then either be removed or coiled, zip-tied, and left in place. Then, route the larger main cables through the PVC pipe, attach connectors to the Vista Rack backplane board using the drawings provided. Fully seat each plug and tighten the retaining screws for each connector, making sure none of the individual's conductor's pins were backed out during seating. If applicable, attach the VSG1 and VSG2 ground wires to the terminal block specified in the drawings provided and fully tighten the retaining screws. Make sure VSG1 and VSG2 connections are made before and are not removed whenever the gear is energized. Do not remove the VSG1 and VSG2 wire connections while the gear is energized. This will result in equipment damage and may cause a nuisance operation. Once all connections are made, straighten the cables within the low voltage compartment and bundle them neatly by installing the wraps. Gather and twist the butyl tubing around the cable bundle and apply tie wraps along the length of the excess butyl tubing. Before connecting external power to the fuse block, reference the wiring diagrams included in the switchgear shipment to ensure proper polarity. Failure to follow these precautions can cause damage to the equipment. To connect external control power, connect the line and neutral to the fuse block. Do not ground the low voltage enclosure to the external control power building grounding. PVC, non-metallic seal tight, or other connection methods should be used to avoid bonding the LVE enclosure to the building ground when connecting external control power. Place each motor operator over the operating shaft on the gear. It may be necessary to manually rotate the motor operator shaft by twisting the operating disc to line up the operator key with the shaft notch key. Once in place, remove the protective cap from the motor operator mating plug. Then insert the motor operator cable connector onto the mating plug on the operator, making sure the connector is keyed in properly. Thoroughly tighten the connector onto the mating plug by applying at least four full turns to the connector. Secure each motor operator to the stop ring on the tank using the bolt provided. There is no specific torque requirement. Tighten the bolt and then back off one half turn. An electrical operation mechanical blocking key is attached to the back of the motor operator with a chain. Fit this item into the operating disc. Verify that all LEDs are functional by pressing the push to test lamps button on each control board. Reinstall the front panels of the operation and termination compartments. The low voltage enclosure is now wired and ready for testing. See the written instructions for more details on initial test of motor operators and controls. To complete the installation, caulk around the bottom of the enclosure. A waterproof silicon rubber room temperature vulcanizing compound is recommended. Apply the caulk to fill the spaces between the cable and the conduit and cap all empty conduits to prevent the entry of moisture and rodents. Wipe down the exterior of the enclosure with a clean, damp cloth. Refinish any scratches or abrasions with SNC Touch-Up Finish Red Oxide Primer. 
Order catalog number 9999058 for olive green finish, 9999080 for light gray finish, and 9999061 for red oxide primer. No other finish or primer is approved. The area to be touched up should be cleaned to remove all oil and grease. Sand the area to remove any traces of rust that may be present and make sure that all edges are feathered before applying primer. Do not sand to the bare metal. Then insert a padlock into each hasp. The installation is now complete. We hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, please visit our website at snc.com.